I'm Marta Waller. I'm here with Dr. Joe Horosti. Hi, Joe. Hi, Marta. We have a lot of interesting stuff to talk about, especially Lindsay Lohan. She's out. Yes. She was only in rehab for 23 days. What's right. that all about? Well, actually, um, from what I hear, it's a, I think it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, you know, we have talked about the fact that this might be her last chance, and I still, I still stand by that because she had some failed uh, attempts at rehab two or three times, uh, although her mother is not absolutely sure how many. <laughs> Uh, I think her mother should know, but nevertheless, um, we, uh, it turns out that uh, the doctors at UCLA felt that she was not as sick as uh, people had made her out to be. Her addiction was not as severe. Furthermore, she did not suffer from ADHD and or bipolar disorder. So I mean, these are all good things. Now, the judge has said, though, she has been released from UCLA Neuropsychiatric mm -hmm. Hospital under very, very tight restrictions. Mm -hmm. She has to submit to drug, random drug tests twice a week, must have um, uh, psychological counseling mm -hmm. at least four times a week. Mm -hmm. She can't leave the state of California. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible for her to really do the kind of intensive rehab that she apparently does need under this kind of release? Well, yes. Uh, you know, Marta, what I would like to say is uh, I have a lot of respect for Judge Alden Fox. Uh, I have not had personal experience with him. Mm -hmm. However, some of my patients have. And I have found him to be very tough, but very fair. Mm -hmm. And I feel what he has set up for Lindsay is a fair thing. You know, if he takes into account the fact that she's working, that she has a lot of different projects going on, that she's not just uh, like any other ordinary person, uh, but she has commitments and she uh, takes care of a lot of people. We have talked about that. Um, but I think the bottom line to all this is how serious is Lindsay about her own recovery. Mm -hmm. That is really the bottom line. If she is serious, if she has learned something from this experience of having gone to uh, essentially a, a sober living place before she went into uh, jail for those 13 days, where she was for nearly a, a week, uh, mm -hmm. this was uh, uh, Robert Shapiro's place, where I have a feeling that she was detoxed, uh, more or less, before she went into right. jail. That's why her jail experience wasn't worse than it would have been had she just walked in, in uh, right after her sentencing. Because then she would have had a difficult detox. She would have had no way to uh, alleviate some of the symptoms uh, or assuage some of the symptoms that she was going to experience coming off all the various drugs that she was on, Adderall, also Dilaudid, uh, and so on. Uh, so she's already been partially detoxed and she's in jail for 13 days so if you add that up that's about 20 days almost three weeks so by the time she gets to UCLA she's pretty much detoxed from whatever that she had been taking before so I'm not surprised that the UCLA doctors found that you know she had a very easy detox because she was already detoxed by the time she got there so she just had 23 days of rehab at UCLA now again uh, <clears throat> as we have discussed before she not only has this chemical dependency issue, which I think is to a large extent the tip of the iceberg, she also has all the personality issues and also the fact that she was raised in a particular environment that we have discussed that is not exactly conducive to the best emotional outcome. She has been a child star since she was very young. She has not had a normal childhood. She has had to uh, become a breadwinner at a much too young an age. She's many ways uh, extremely mature. She's really a child woman, as we have discussed. Now, she's certainly not a stupid woman. No. I mean, this is, this is a young woman who mm -hmm. has the ability. She's a very good actress. Yes. Uh, it was interesting to me to see the photographs of her leaving rehab, mm -hmm. and she looked slim, but what she really looked was not bloated. Yes. She looked very good coming out. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if she could maybe have turned some kind of a corner, but you have said that with stimulants, such as Adderall, there's almost like a rebound after six or seven weeks, and she'd be kind of at that point right now, sort of that, that point where sort of a rebound craving would occur. How will her therapists cope with this? Well, I think, first of all, the therapists need to be aware of this, mm -hmm. that there's going to be a rebound of cravings for stimulants and for cocaine or whatever she may have been using about six weeks after she last used. Mm -hmm. And that is about the time now. So as long as she's aware, the therapists are aware, 
uh, then she can get through that period. And how long, uh, I mean, what would sort of be a window on that? About a week to 10 days, where it's going to be really severe craving right about now. Uh, and if she can get beyond that, then it's going to get a lot easier for her, a lot better. And if she's working, then mm -hmm. so much the better. Now, if she can't leave California, that limits her where she can work, mm -hmm. but certainly if there are projects here, mm -hmm. she can. Now, is it possible? And this is sort of devil's advocate because as the mother of two daughters, or three daughters actually, uh, is devil's advocate, could she have fooled the doctors into believing that she's okay? I mean, is it, I mean, well, certainly no psychiatrist yeah. would want to hear that right. because you want to think that you know you're expert enough in your field. But is it possible? Yes, of course it's possible. Uh, you know, the mental health field is not so far along that we cannot be fooled. Uh, it is actually fairly difficult to fake mental illness. Uh, I'm, I'm convinced of that. It's not that easy to malignant mental illness. However. Uh, a good actress can fool a doctor into believing that he or she is further along in their recovery or in uh, their progress than they really are. Uh, so, I, you know, certainly possible. And again, Lindsay can be very persuasive. And it's not only Lindsay, but she has quite an entourage around her. Her mother is a very strong advocate for her, and uh, other people. Her attorney is not the easiest person to to deal with when you're on the wrong side of her, and so on. So, I mean, she's had a lot of people advocating for her, wanting to get an early release. Mm -hmm. And I, can, I would not want to be in the position of the UCLA doctors who had to say no to these people. Now, she has to live at home until the first part of November, yes. so this would be pretty, the same time frame as mm -hmm. it would have been had she stayed mm -hmm. in the hospital, which incidentally was $40,000 a week that she has to pay. I see. This is a, that was a hugely expensive piece of business for her. So uh, I may be in the absence of severe illness or mm -hmm. severe addiction, it was uh, prohibitively expensive, and they felt that it was something she okay. could accomplish. And the one other thing I wanted to ask is, how dangerous is, is uh, Adderall to a patient who is not diagnosed with ADHD because she was uh, diagnosed with not having ADHD? Well, Marta, as you know, Adderall is a uh, powerful stimulant. It's uh, dextroamphetamine. It is chemically very closely related to methamphetamine, which is speed or crystal. Mm -hmm. Uh, and speed, of course, can be smoked and snorted and, uh, and misused in all kinds of ways. And it has created tremendous uh, havoc for a lot of people. It has destroyed a lot of lives. Now, having said that, Adderall is not nearly as powerful a stimulant, uh, at least in the usual doses that it's given. If someone wants to abuse Adderall and take much more than is prescribed, then it will have the same effect or similar effect to if you take too much of methamphetamine. You can take enough of Adderall to get the same effects. You can become totally psychotic. You could lose touch with reality. You can develop the same kind of problems with your teeth. Uh, you know, people lose their teeth, et cetera, et cetera, when they use methamphetamine too much because it causes dry mouth. Uh, they will pick at their own skin and so forth. So the same thing could happen with large enough doses of Adderall. Taken in the usual doses, however, it is a fairly mild stimulant, and it's often used by college kids, you know, who are staying up studying for mm -hmm. exams. And unless you become really addicted to this, it's not that dangerous a drug per se. Well, Lindsay is out. She mm -hmm. has fulfilled the terms mm -hmm. uh, such as they are. She has a new judge, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll just have to see how this goes. And I would imagine she'll be keeping a fairly low profile, and we'll keep following it. So mm -hmm. until next time, I'm Marta Waller. Yeah. And I'm Dr. Joe Horosti. And thanks for watching.